Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina on the Carolina coast. And today we have the special opportunity to hang out with Chef Keith Rhodes. And so this is kind of that comfort zone, kind of just remixed a little bit. He is an extremely talented chef. He's a purveyor and he's so knowledgeable about the local, especially seafood ingredients of the coast of Carolina. Yeah, you, Chef yeah. Keith has kindly arranged for us to go around to meet some of the suppliers, the people that supply that harvest ingredients that he serves at his restaurant. We're gonna hang out with Chef Keith, we're gonna eat with him, he's gonna cook some amazing dishes, and I'm gonna share this entire eating adventure with the amazing Chef Keith Rhodes in this video right now. So to begin our amazing time touring seafood on the Carolina coast with Chef Keith Rhodes. We're beginning at his restaurant, which is called Ketch. He is gonna make for us some breakfast. I know he, he mentioned to me some shrimp and grits, some fish and grits. Uh, we're gonna have a quick bite to eat here at the restaurant. Then before we go straight to the oyster farm, and then also up today, we're gonna to be seeing the soft shell crabs. Chef Keith is gonna cook out of his food truck. That's gonna be so cool. But anyway, let's stop here at Catch First this morning. Let's meet up with Chef Keith and have some amazing breakfast. Good morning, yeah, good hello. Morning, Mark. How hello. are you? Good, thank you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Hi, Micah. Hi. <laughs> yes, Chef Keith. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you also. Good, good morning. What I needed this morning first. Shrimp and grits. We're gonna do a variant of uh, fried grouper or fish and grits. Okay. And we're also gonna do a dish that's very familiar throughout the Carolinas, especially in African American culture, called Blending Susan. And I'll explain that as we put it into the pan, but we're sure. gonna dive right in with the shrimp and grits, onions, and peppers. And that's kind of the foundation for everything, not just African-American, but in the South for sure. Cool. So I'm gonna add a handful of that here. Right. Okay. With a, a lot of Southeast Asian influence. So you'll source our shrimp from North Carolina here. These are okay. Pamela Co shrimp here. These are 1620 size shrimp. Okay. okay. So, I'm going to saute these around a little bit. This whole dish probably won't take any more than about five minutes. Just turning a nice little pink right over to the whole uh, okay. side here. We're going to add a handful of shiitake mushrooms right here. Some great tomatoes right here. I'm going to add some fresh ginger to this dish right here. And we oh, use that. baby ginger, which they call like cool. pink ginger right here. This is sourced locally, grown. Okay. And uh, we're gonna get a little bit of garlic out of here. A little bit of bacon. Our bacon comes from Benton's bacon up in the mountains of Tennessee. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of Old Bay in here. All right. Yeah. Old Bay? Old Bay. And it's what a blend. exactly is that? It's a blend of seasonings that they traditionally use with seafood. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. And, and it's just. A little it's, bit of chili powder. I would say a little bit of paprika, okay. salt, cumin, celery, uh, seed, uh, ground bay. That's looking really, really good right really now. Really good. A little bit of fresh dill to this okay. mix right here. And this is looking really good. The so last thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna deglaze this pan with a little bit of Chinese sherry. Absolutely. Shrimp and grits is something that came from the lower Carolinas, uh, okay. South Carolina area. Okay. And it got really, really popular around the end of the 90s, and just everybody knows shrimp and grits. Yeah. So we're done. All right. It's off. And what we're going to do is we're going to plate this. And so grits, grits is mainly cornmeal. Yeah, it's plus. Plus those ingredients of okay. uh, cream, butter, and garlic, butter and, garlic. and salt. Okay. But, a little bit of cheese on yeah. 
a little bit of hoop chatter. And then one of our biggest sellers at the restaurant here. So this is on the menu? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Sit on the board of North Carolina Tension. It's just very important that we use indigenous ingredients. Everything, Everything is local. Very regional. Everything is local. Very, very regional. And so uh, shrimp and grits. That's restaurant. Um, when the Gullah folks came from West Africa to the low country mm -hmm. of Charleston, South Carolina, they brought all kinds of different things. And, mm. and, and at some point, we'll eat Carolina go rice and yeah. different things like that. But ginger was something that they brought as well. And so cool. it's very popular in Gullah very cooking, cool. the use of ginger in ingredients. And so we kind of integrate those things again when we're laying those flavors when yeah. we're cooking. And so it's a, it's a nice point and it's something you probably won't get when you eat traditional versions of shrimp and grits and yeah. fish and grits and things like that. Okay. This is cool. our traditional version. Very cool. Right on. So what we're making right now is just a tomato salsa to go with our fish and grits, something really fresh and cooling. Onions and peppers. Onions and peppers. That's right. That foundation. We're going to do about a half a cup right there. Now, you know, um, a lot of folks have got this going on. A lot of folks either like okra or they don't like okra. And it really kind of depends on how that dish is prepared. As the okra is sauteing there, we're gonna move over to start on the fish and grits. It's a very seasonal very, seafood very on, the, seasonal. on the Carolina it, coast here. It, exactly, and so we, we cook with what's available, and so a grouper is something, it's one of our higher end fishes. It's kind of like halibut in the north and, and things yeah. like that. And uh, it, it's crazy because it's gotten super expensive here lately. Mm. Um, and what we do is we take all our grouper trim from where we cut all our whole fish. We season it with a little bit of spices. And I'm gonna drop this in a little bit of buttermilk. All right. So we'll take that, kind of drain it just a little bit. I'm gonna put it into my seasoned flour here. Give this a little light toss. You know, when we're breading, it's all really about the technique, you know. Yeah, uh, definitely. So now that we've got our grouper breaded, we're okay. gonna go ahead and just drop it in the fryer right here. The temp's about 325, 330. And we're gonna cut this off. Now we're getting the nice caramel taste that we're looking yeah. for. That smells incredible. You can tell how smoky it's going to be. Grouper, floating, right. nice golden brown. That's what we're looking for right quick. Beautiful. This is beautiful. And we're getting ready to plate this in just one moment. All right. All right. And so with this version, we're going to leave the cheese off. Okay. Stir the salsa around right here a little bit. We've got local red grouper Adler grits with a tomato ginger basil salsa. Super good. Yeah, it looks and, so and, good. and again, this is very traditional. You could go throughout the Carolinas and get grits with fried fish and sliced tomatoes. And so this is kind of that comfort zone, kind of just remixed a little bit. So good, smells incredible. I think we're moving to the dining room to eat. All the dishes are prepared, looks absolutely incredible. The mix, and I love how Chef Keith adds his classic dishes, but he adds his personal touch to them. And I love his use of ginger too. You can smell the ginger on the table, as well as those onions. Let's scoop a little bit of everything. Oh, the shrimp and grits. Oh man, I cannot wait. Limpin' Susan. Limpin' Susan. Yeah. They said that Look was at... uh, Hoppin' John's girlfriend. Ah, yeah, that's, that's cool. The, that's the tradition. Oh man, you see that slight char, which is gonna be so much flavor on this, on this okra. I love that. 
sprinkle a little bit on the inside? Just on the inside. Of the okay. It's, uh, it's kind of like boiled down cane sugar. Wow. Cherokee tomatoes. Wow. A little bit of olive oil. Absolutely. What a plate of food. Shrimp and grits right there in the center. Oh man, you can see the creaminess of those grits. Oh, I love that, that dill in there too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, the ginger. That's good. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And I love how you, you didn't overcook those shrimp. Still juicy. Right firm on. yet a little bounce. Yep, bouncy. Yeah. That's what it is, they're bouncy. In your mind, you don't think that it goes together, but once it's kind of integrated and put in front of you and it's going in through a different vessel, instead of your mind and your eyes, it's going mm -hmm. in through the mouth, it processes so much differently. <laughs> well said, well said. That is spectacular. Yeah. Shrimp and grits. Okay, let's try the fish and grits. Oh wow, well, yeah. All the all the freshness of the fish, the crispiness, and then again with those creamy grits. I love how the grits you can you can feel the texture. They're creamy, they're soothing, but not not too rich. Like just the perfect balance. The limpin limpin Susan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. You immediately taste that smokiness from being seared off in the pan, that browning. It's so fragrant. It's got this aroma of the, the cured pork, the bacon in there, which is just, it's not overpowering, but it's just like bringing out, elevating the flavor. I love the simplicity of it, highlighting okra as an ingredient. Okay, and then finally the biscuit, fresh biscuits that Chef Keith made. Mm. The fluffiness. Oh, nice. The, the molasses is not too sweet, but you really taste the depth of flavor, that reduction, and then that smokiness being, being cooked over the, the hickory. You, you taste the fire in it. Oh, yeah. Bite of heirloom tomato, local. Oh, wow. The juiciness of that tomato. Oh, with the cracked black pepper on it. Oh, wow. The, the fruitiness of that tomato. Oh, what a balance. Yeah. Oh man, that's a incredible tomato. I love just mixing it up, getting that okra going with the grits. You might get a bite of shrimp, you might get a bite of fish, and you'll be happy with whatever you get on your fork. Mm. So good. Gonna take a little bit more of the shrimp and grits. Don't think I can decide if I like the shrimp and grits more or the fish and grits. They're both superb. They're just both so perfectly good. Okay, fish and grits is the, the okra, which I'm just gonna pour on top. All right. What, what a meal. shrimp and grits on the next level. Wow, it's so good. Mm. That ginger is one of the standout ingredients for me. That was the greatest ever breakfast, amazing food. And just talking, sitting there, talking with Chef Keith and his wife, Angela, what I love immediately about them is their respect and their mindfulness of ingredients, of uh, where things come from that they cook, that they serve on their menu. And they're just so genuine, so nice. It's an honor to have a chance to hang out with them for a few days. From here, we're driving to the coast and we're gonna go to an oyster farm. This is my first time to the Carolina coast. Well, welcome. Thank you, Chef yeah. Keith. 
Where, what are we doing right now? So right now we're in Holly Ridge, North Carolina, and we're going to meet a good friend of mine, James Hargrove, and he has a topsoil mariculture, and uh, we're, we're cultivating local oysters here, oysters that are, uh, it's a certain type of oyster that is here that grows all year round. And traditionally in North Carolina, you only eat oysters in the winter months that end up with R. And uh, right. North Carolina aquaculture is booming right now. And this is, he's one of the guys really responsible for that. We use cool. these in the restaurants. He supply, uh, supplies a lot of the area. We're gonna show you all about North Carolina oysters. That's awesome. Mark. Mark, James. Nice to meet Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Nice you to meet always, you. Always, right always. You got hanging or okay. hanging? There's 150,000 baby oysters in this cooler right here. James did just say 150,000 oysters in that cooler right there. Wow. Oh, wow. And look, so how old are these right now at this mm, stage? I don't know when they respond, but probably two months from like inception. Because okay. right. like, uh, I guess when the hatchery gets them, or the nursery, no, it's the hatchery, when they get them, when they spawn them, it's three weeks where they're plankton. So they're floating around uh, in the water for three weeks and then okay. These, depending on lots of factors, this time of the year, they're growing really fast. So okay. uh, I wouldn't think older than three months. Think about genetics and chromosomes. Most organisms have two sets of chromosomes. That's why we're called diploids. And oysters that are commercially farm raised have been bred to be able to be what's called a triploid. And essentially the easiest way to explain it is a seedless watermelon. So okay. that watermelon, <laughs> you don't have to worry about any seeds at all. It's the same thing here. So these oysters don't put any, any energy into growing um, gametes, so sperm or eggs. So they put all their energy in towards growing just meat production. So they're growing a lot faster, which is great for us. So this is the Australian long line system. It's called the SEPA system. And we only have a few lines that we're working on getting them up. But um, this first line right here, you can see has some floats on it. Um, those floats on the basket cause it when the tide comes up to flip. And so these oysters are getting tumbled on the tide twice a day. And, and that's, so they get a great shape. That's really important for the development of the oyster. The, yes, yes. The water like rushing through yeah. them. Yeah, and, okay. and, and it prevents them from being maybe stuck in one position in the bag for too long. All right. Ready? Yep. Nice. Man, because each of these oysters that are grown regionally, like each little water body is slightly different based off of the environmental parameters and stump sound is kind of of a lagoon system which is very rare in north carolina and so the water is kind of retained in the system longer it's a little slower mm. so there's more sediment in the water and that's kind of you know all those things are going into the flavor of the oyster mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a special set of circumstances and conditions that line up just right and right now the salinity yesterday was 32 parts per thousand which is right. high right. Mm. i think ocean water is 35. Yeah. So it's right there at, at a high, high salt. Um, mm. And we'll, we'll taste a couple in just a second. I'm gonna hop in. We have some over here. Oh, it's not too deep. <laughs> Such an educational experience learning about the oysters here. And also this is one of the great oyster regions of the United States of the world. There are blue crabs out here. Oh yeah. There are garfish, kind of look shrimp. like alligators, shrimp, uh, trout. Mm. All kinds Red of things. Redfish. Yeah, yeah, Red all fish. kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about these oysters, um, is they're sort of like a, a nursery habitat. Yep. Oh, yeah. We're going to sample some of these. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> these are market ready. It's been, if, if I remember correctly, getting close to a year. Wow. Bit less than that. Wow. It, but there's differences in the size, right? But, uh, yeah, but for the most part, these are these are all ready to go. Jesus. Just a difference in mud. Yeah. A couple inches. Yep. Um, and yeah. you can see the growth lip on them. And, you know, a lot of people, I, I like to think of oysters like snowflakes. They're all unique. Yeah, yeah. And sure. they all have different little shells that are slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, that one's got some really awesome purple. 
see that's really what you like right there, that there. cup in the bottom yeah because that that meat is laying down in there uh. growing. yeah and so that, that's that's what you want you know you're going to have a nice size all the love that's put into growing these this is a, a, a beautiful oyster uh pressure washer but enough to knock some of this mud off Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, what? Oh, you got to try this. It's, it's real good. So these are at the 150,000 oyster bag. Yeah. yeah, it almost looks like a, it's almost like a sand. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. but those are they started all baby. out yeah they started out basically oh. as grains of sand mm. when they are getting ready to transition from when they're plankton larvae to um, a baby oyster um, they take culch material micro culch which is just shell that has been crushed mm. and they spread it out on a on a thin layer and they've they've got the um, size down so that one oyster will settle on that one piece of mm. culch and so um, they really are like sand grains when they first start out. It's amazing to be able to see this entire process, the entire cycle that James is sharing with us, all the way from those little tiny baby oysters to the full-grown oysters. And it's, it's really a, a process of nurturing, well, of time, and giving them the environment, the natural environment, all natural, to let them nurture naturally. Um, and then just James fostering it to, to work that way. But it's really the, the time and the nature that is integral to the production and to the raising of oysters in a natural way like this. Okay, so we're, we're heading to the shore to the live oak tree where we're gonna sample some of the oysters. It's beautiful here too. The nature, pristine. What an incredible, spectacular location on the banks. We uh, docked up on an island underneath live oak trees. So peaceful, so clean and pure and beautiful. And we're about to crack open some oysters. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Look at that. Can I get a... You want some? Yes, please. Okay, good. Easily be one of the most beautiful places that you ever eat an oyster. Not to mention, freshest oyster that you'll ever eat. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, wow. Oh, nothing, not too salty, yet just that taste of the sea. The purity, absolutely sensational. Yeah, they're sweet too, so sweet. Yeah, I do want to taste it with lemon too, just for the, just for the purity of it. Cheers, my friend. James? Oh yeah, let me get in there. Come on, James. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Right on. Mm. Bam. Wow. That's right, so good. Even, so even, the, so even good. having them on the ice, really cold, just takes it to a different level from room temp. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 
That's why I want to put them on ice for a little bit because, yeah, there's something about it when it's nice and that cool and refreshing and then wow. the salt and then yeah. there's nothing like an oyster to allow you to really taste the scent of place. Like mm, the oyster that's for sure. embodies where it was grown unlike anything else on the planet. You can't, wow. you can't that's, there's nothing else. I agree. What a statement, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh man, oh, juicy, melt in your mouth, not overpowering in any way, but just like, oh, just a, a pure harmony, a balance, yeah. It's good with the, it's good with the wow. lemon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good with the hot sauce too. Good both ways. Yeah, man. But yeah, definitely with the lemon, it's just like the purity of it. Mm -hmm. You can just taste the, the essence of the oyster, the sweetness of it. That's but I do love hot sauce too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, one got away. <laughs> this scene almost looks like a painting. <laughs> Straight up like we're in a painted scene here with the colors, <laughs> with the light, with the live oak tree on the boat. So, mm. coming from Surf City. Wow. Some of the greatest oysters you will have anywhere in the world. Just blown away by this entire experience, hanging out with Chef Keith, seeing where the ingredients, well, when you go to catch Chef Keith's restaurant, this is the back of the scenes. This is where his oysters come from. And just to see this gives the food that you eat, the food that we eat more meaning, the process that goes into it. It's an honor to also hang out with James who puts so much love into the oysters that he raises. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they don't even need anything at mm -mm. all. <laughs> like, sometimes wow. it's really nice just to taste the purity mm -hmm. of it. You know exactly where it's coming from, yeah. That sweet balance, sweet and salty balance. Right. Last oyster. Very nice. Mm. Wow. That lemon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. Mm. That is delicious. Delicious. The taste of nature at its finest. Look at my. Yeah. There are dolphins. Oh, yeah, two of them. Three of them. No. There are mica. Whoa, three. Yeah, we're very lucky to see it. That was incredible. And not only were the oysters some of the best that you'll ever have, but that was an education on sustainable farming of oysters in the greatest quality, ultimate care. Huge thank you to James for giving us a tour, for showing us uh, how he produces, how he takes care of oysters. His oysters are available, again, at Keith's Restaurant. At Ketch, you'll find them. Uh, so you can eat them when you're in Wilmington. And then at a variety of supermarkets, I'll have all his information in the description box below. From here, we're going down the coast to Carolina Beach, I believe, where we're gonna meet up with Keith and Angela's friend who produces soft shell crabs. And there's gonna be a surprise there waiting for us. So we drove down the coast to a place called Carolina Beach. Met up with Uncle Phil. Yeah, Uncle Phil. And Uncle Phil, what do you do? Well, I commercially fish and mostly crab. Okay. And uh, we also do soft shells. And I think that's what you're really here for. And uh, uh, in the wintertime, I'll oyster some. Chef Keith has been telling me that you've been getting Crabs from him for over 20 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, it's been a very long time. And all, yeah. all sorts of crabs or especially soft shells? Especially soft shells. Okay. That's the majority. And then we'll uh, take it to the yeah. food lab over here and. Uh, Surprise. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll cook Make some soft down. shells <laughs> and uh, let you really see from shed or from farm to table per se and yeah. see how that really tastes. Cool. Right awesome. on. Right on. Right. Well, let's go back here and we'll take a look. All right. 
Okay. So that thing was bought 38 years ago today. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And the door now. Here we are, stepping underneath the house. The soft shell crab. What would you call this? Uh, molting room? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Wow. And so these, that tray right there, most of these crabs are uh, 24, 48 hours away. I can tell by putting my finger up under his shell right there, he's cr starting to crack open. So what I'll do is we call that a buster because it's starting to bust. And then I'll take this crab and I throw the ones that are getting closer to busting in this tray just so I know where they are coming out of their shell. And you can see where you can actually see it starting to crack right along there. Yeah. Then I'll stick it in this tray here. Now these are, you've had molting crabs like See that female right there? Uh, she's just come out of her shell. Right. Oh, so they released that shell. Yeah, it, look, that, this is, okay. that's just the top. The top shell. That yeah, and so they leave, when they come out of that shell, they leave everything behind, even the lungs, get a new set of lungs. Wow. Yeah, and it's cool. It's, it's really cool. Incredible. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'll it's just go ahead, yeah, I'll just go ahead and stick them in here because what you want to do is once he comes out of that shell, He's like a deflated balloon, and uh, <laughs> you, and you, he's got she's got wrinkles in her, and she can barely move everything. Mm. So you have this very short period of time. Yes. When you can harvest them before the they get hard. shell gets hard. Yeah. How, about how long is, is that window? It it, the, it changes with the water temperature. Now that we're cooling off a little bit, um, it's couple, about three hours three hours yeah so it's something that you have to constantly monitor yeah. and yeah. Yeah. really like yeah. care for yeah in the fall I'll keep it running and then you know you might have six hours so but yeah not much sleep wow and so these are the empty shells there's is that another soft crab or no, yeah, I think this is it yeah. I'll yeah. Uh, pull them out put them in the refrigerator and that stops all of the getting hard and then Keith gets them and he's quick on cleaning them and getting them fried up. And he takes care of them oh, in the yeah. kitchen. Oh yes he does. <laughs> That's my hand. That's a full size man hand there. <laughs> and uh that's a that's nice crab right there. Good, good, good uh, that's a big meal right there. So those guys are ready. Oh yeah. Ready to eat. Oh yeah. Beauty. That's a big one. And you can feel that. Oh yeah, <laughs> soft, yep. yeah. so smooth, 100% yeah. so edible. It's actually a fascinating process it is. and a fascinating creature, the way it does that too. It's just it's incredible, yeah. Beautiful Almost swimmer. a transformation, yeah. So these are a tray of soft shells ready to go. We're on our way to catch food truck, which is in the backyard here. It is not gonna get fresher you can it would be impossible to get fresher than this oh, nice. beautiful. <laughs> yeah mumps. wow yeah i usually take the hood off all right and then we clean it so you're left with a crab that looks just like that right there all right Absolutely awesome. Chef Keith drove down the food truck, the catch food truck. So we're gonna step into the kitchen here. We're gonna cook in the food truck. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, so Chef Keith, what's the story of the food truck? Oh, wow. So <laughs> the food truck really kind of came about because we opened up a, a very high-end restaurant. And- uh, Which is catch. Which is catch. And I'll just say that when we opened up that restaurant, everyone couldn't really make it in the front door. It was just at a level of cooking and, and, and uh, that everybody couldn't make it. So we wanted to be able to have something that was super accessible, but okay. still serve the food with integrity like we do. And uh, that's how the, the food truck was born, per se. Most, uh, events. most of the time, with our food truck is already pre-booked. Okay. And right now, we do a, a lot of work, movie production here in the area. There, there's a really big movie studio 
Screen Gems movie studio here. So we're actually out on the set many days of the week. Okay, so I'm just gonna blast these guys out so I'm able to... I mean, more accessible to everybody and also, well, it's transportable. It, it drives and so you can pull up to gatherings. Uh, it's the perfect social food vehicle and also with the same philosophy of Chef Keith and his sustainable approach to seafood, his, again, integrity and friendliness. Oh, it's so cool. And it's so cool to have this experience where he drove it here to Uncle Phil's house to get the soft shell crabs. What did you call it? From shed to shed to... To mouth. To mouth. <laughs> some chopped bacon. I've got some fresh jalapenos. I've got some cut dill and some garlic powder. Take a little bit of mayo and this really well. And that's gonna be our backdrop. No soft shell, just kind of put it right in the buttermilk a little bit. And then we're going right into the breader. And just a real gentle breading. No need to pat it down really heavy or anything. go into the buttermilk and into the flour mixture just gently kind of shaken off uh, those are ready to go in the deep fryer yeah. you can probably hear that hiss they're just popping they're frying so beautifully Oh man, that aroma of the soft shell crabs, so good. That's experience, man. Yep, true. Ready? Out the grease. Hot out the grease. <laughs> that's it right there. Soft shell crab, hot out the grease. That's right. Fresh as possible. Fresh out the grease. <laughs> Fries, soft shell crabs, made into sandwiches. Beautiful plating. Man, I cannot wait <laughs> to try it. Thank you, Chef yeah, Key. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely amazing. Hey, it's our pleasure. North Carolina's finest. I know. Serving right out the window. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Give those to That's for Mark, his wife. The final finishing touch, Chef had made this pickle from yellow, it's a, I think it's a squash, but shaved very, very thin. Made into a pickle, it's raw. It's so good. that literally less than 10 minutes ago yeah. was in the tank. Right on. <laughs> now it's in the bun. <laughs> wow, it's a big crab. Yeah. They call them whales. Here we go. Another cheers. Cheers, Bam. Chef. All right. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, mm. oh wow, yes. <laughs> that is so serious. <laughs> it's seriously good. Mm. So it's so crispy. Mm. Oh, and I love your batter. It's just perfectly seasoned. You see the skin and the shell, but you see that meatiness on the ins meatiness on the mm. inside. Extra crispy. Wow, that's sensational. And the aioli, and the aioli that you made too. Mm -hmm. That is. That's the ultimate shop shell crab, crispy shop shell crab sandwich. Mmm, it is delicious. Chef <laughs> Tooth Man. <laughs> right on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You are the man. It is our pleasure for mm. sure. Right on. I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh -uh. Incredible. And then those pickles with those red peppercorns in there mm -hmm. with the, the dill in there. So good. Wow. Wow. Chef mm. you're the man. Right on. Absolutely awesome. Mm. Our pleasure. And what, I, what I've loved so much is that the whole concept of, of today is that we've seen where your ingredients come from. That's right. Which always makes eating more meaningful. For sure. The work that was behind the, the production of the ingredient mm -hmm. that you then treated with so much respect right on. to serve. Well, you know, that's what we do. Um, we believe in it and we, we, we really live it. We do it. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from out there in the ocean, harvesting oysters, mussels, soft shells, and whatever else we can get our hands on. Yep. And try to make it tasty. Awesome. Right on. So cool. Thank you, Chef. Next up, we met up with Anna. Yes, sir. Anna and, Shalom. And Anna, what do you do? I own a company called Shalom Seafood, and I harvest uh, wild shellfish, so clams, oysters, mussels, and stone crab, all by hand, directly to chefs here in North Carolina. And Keith is one of my favorites to supply. Right on. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, and so we're just gonna kind of go out. We've been waiting for the tide to get low, so we can go out and, and get the wild mussels. But we're gonna do something special with the mussels a little bit later, and just kind of let you see what we do with indigenous ingredients here. How we just take something right from the hand, right from the ocean. Minutes later, we're creating something super fabulous. It's a beautiful day out here. It Thanks really cool. is. Thank right. you. Yeah, thank I'm you so excited. much for having us. Right. Thank you. Yeah, and this is a beautiful place out here too. Got some chairs. Would you like another cooler to sit on? Maybe the next. You've been, Chef, you've been uh, friends with Anna for a long time. You've been... Yeah, absolutely, for 10, 15 years. Yeah, and uh, she kind of started out helping me source these local mussels that uh, other folks didn't want to deal with, you know, and didn't want to cook with, and she took the opportunity to go ahead and get them for me, and ever since then, it's been no looking back. She's uh, expanded, not just get them to me, but for other chefs that want them in the Triangle area, and, Central North Carolina, <laughs> so it's just a great thing. Cool. So these particular mussels, they hold a lot of the salt water. Uh, it's and so it's very important that you have time to purge these. And they're a little bit different than the PEI mussels. They're a little bit larger. And the water, is, you know, it, they take on the flavor of each little terroir where we're at or where they're harvested. So a little bit more where the water's not circulating as much. The salinity tends to be a little bit higher than where they're harvested and the water's getting lots of flow. Um, but I will say that if you're doing dishes where you add the mussels to broths or something like that, these mussels tend not to really work well unless they're purged. So I can have it all year long. Really 
sunny when we left. Looks like a storm is coming up, so the wind has picked up, but that's okay. It's actually, oh, my hat is blowing away. The wind is strong, but this is the spot. It is the spot. <laughs> and a beautiful spot, too. <laughs> so we're, is this an actual, this is an what estuary. is this? Okay, it's, it's an Mason estuary. Burrow. So okay. it's an estuary. It's an estuary that can be publicly fished. All right. Um, but it's maintained by the state, and it's just a really healthy, just a really healthy Ecosystem. island. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, here's some. Oh, so the they're just within. The grow at the base here. of the ah, grass. Okay. And this is a hoary hoary knife, and we just push them up, and then wow. I always debeard them, but they grow to between two to six inches. And they grow in these little clusters, and um, a lot of, I've noticed a lot of baby stone crabs in my boat afterwards, uh, so there's okay. little stone crabs that will eat their way through the bottom of the shell wow. and live inside the mussel, and um, they're cool. beautiful. They're so good. They're so salty. Wow. So we're just going to go through this grass, and there's a lot right here. Hey, little mini jackpot. And you never eat these raw. You always cook them. Okay. I wish you could eat them raw because yeah. I imagine that would be amazing. My favorite way when we eat them is just to grill them and let them pop open slightly. Okay. Um, not to overcook them. So it's a little bit more work for the consumer, but it's well worth it. Well worth it. And then we just have to wander and search. Okay. Yeah, you are fast, but what a location. Beautiful. What a cool place. The ocean's just across there. Yeah, we're in this. It almost looks like we're in a grasslands meadow. Yeah. But we're surrounded by sea. It's beautiful in this muddy, <laughs> muddy outcrop full of grass. And Anna, you are an expert. Well, you just, yeah, I can't even you. see them, but she's just like, oh, there's a cluster of mussels right there, which she just harvests into the basket. <laughs> Look for their little lips, just like when you clam sometimes. And, and they're, so your cool. Your eyes get trained to it for sure. This is so cool. It gets really wet right there, so let's go Okay. You want to try? Yeah, sure. They're called sea beans? Sea beans. It's like yeah, um, an that. asparagus slash cucumber. Thank you. I want one too. Would you like one? So a lot of the chefs that I work with will use these for um, like a crudo or a raw preparation that's ah, okay. cold with these. Sea beans. They're good. Oh, wow. Mm. It's that saltiness. Yeah. Yeah, salty brininess. And in the summer, oh. they turn bright red and the red bean part gets a little sweeter, but they're, oh, that's delicious, yeah. They're really yummy. You can imagine the pop that would add and the texture to, yep. the, to the fish. It's cluster. All right. Yeah. And I leave these little baby ones behind. All right. Because it just makes sense. <laughs> excuse me. Can you say excuse me, Micah? There's quite a bit while I'm out here. Oh yeah. So when the tide finally drops, all along here is this beautiful oyster bed. Okay. And tucked back where you can see the divots down, there's stone crab nests, and I catch those all by hand. So, so everything cool. is very like um, Look at this. There's hands no on. waste ever. Zero yeah. waste. Wow, there's another big cluster. I poke in the eyeball. <laughs> No um, nobody else is harvesting these in North Carolina. They're not even on our trip oh. ticket program. DMF. Nobody really wants them. Yeah, well, they, they have many... not been a commodity and they, we've been eating them for, my husband and I have been eating them for a okay. long time, but uh, no other fisherman was marketing them or selling them. It was, it was so exciting to introduce something that they weren't used to and that was mm. totally unthought of. But like I said, they're not even on the trip ticket program. So You're showing good. respect to the ingredient harvesting it, and then Chef Keith is showing so much respect in the way that he prepares it. Exactly. Just it's both sides. Just all about love, and that's so important when you're, especially when you're eating. <laughs> Yet another scenario where Chef Keith serves ingredients when you're eating at catch or eating the food that Chef Keith prepares. Just think about Anna here, harvesting mussels wild on this muddy embankment in the rain, in the wind, in every element, in every element <laughs> and loving it. Loving it. <laughs> and loving it. Look how like... It's what, a great time. I'm, and I've known Anna I'm for approximately 45 minutes now and already <laughs> like your happiness out here is just shining. Like you, you. you can tell that you love it. Thank you. You I can really tell that you love it. it like from <laughs> the start, you. you know. 
and that's that makes a huge difference though. Thank you so much. I agree. I and love then, working with people who share that same passion. Cool. For sure. <laughs> and then and then yeah, then take that back to the restaurant. And this is the behind the scenes of what happens. So cool to see. So as you're washing them, you can see they have this beautiful pearl sheen yes. to them. Nice. Oops. They're beautiful. Hawaii like seafood. Yep. Fried lobster tails or lobsters and they stack them. The beard is The beard is what holds little... them to the marsh. It's like their legs. Okay. That little And that segment. soaks up all that flavor. So once you remove that, um, uh. then it's ready to steam. But if you leave it on, cool. there's a Last lot longer. more longevity. Okay. When I was when I had the potential They are really pretty. I'm really happy with the sizing. See? That's our dealer's tag. Okay. So, yay! I love you guys so, so, so. Wow, well, yes. So thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. You cannot be out there in the elements through rain, through wind, out there on that island digging through the mud, searching for wild mussels, if you did not love that. Anna, truly that was incredible. Thank you for taking the time to host us, to show us what you do and what you love. And that amazing natural ingredient, those local North Carolina mussels. We're heading to a restaurant called Bento Box, where we're gonna meet up with one of Chef Keith's friends, who, he, it's a Japanese restaurant, so we're gonna eat Japanese food, but then also Chef Keith is gonna cook up a couple dishes. Okay, everybody say hello to Chef Lee. Yeah. How are you doing? What's up, Chef Lee? I'm good, how are you? Awesome. It's just as much of a pleasure to meet you too. Thank you. This is like an incredibly special meal collaboration between Chef Lee and Chef Keith. And that's the other thing that's got me awesome. so stoked. That's <laughs> the other thing that's got me so stoked. So cool. I'm so stoked today about that because the last time he and I cooked together was for a private dinner for an auction that people had bid on just to have mm. us cook for. James, can I hand this to you? And you can wrap the rest of it. So that's the Toro. That's amazing. The last though. time we were supposed to go was when we went to Thailand. Mmm. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. With the so that'll be sashimi that I'll put right in here. That's a little total. That is the fattiest total. part? It is. Okay. Yeah, look at that marble. That heavy fatty content. So much flavor. It's just butter. Yes. Yeah, it melts. It's gonna melt in it your melts, mouth. yep. A fresh wasabi. That makes all the difference. So, so, so sushi is just something that you fully, fully love. So I absolutely love sushi. I love Asian food in general. Okay. I mean, I love the Asian culture in general. You know, I'm, some, I'm somewhat like you. My wife is Asian as well, partially. Okay. She's half Cuban and half Korean. All right. And uh, you know, when I started with this guy in Rhode Island, in 1985, I never imagined how much it would open up my my palate, my mind, my mentality to just understanding how to find and use just the simplest ingredients. There's three mm. ingredients we have here. So I'm gonna put this on here and then we're gonna go get some soft shells going. Okay, awesome. Set up a surfboard.
roasted oysters that are stacked with slow cooked collards, Benton's, Benton's bacon, pimento cheese. We use a little bit of panko breadcrumbs on the top there. And then we just bake those off in the oven. What do you call what do you call these? So, so these right here are dirty south oysters. Dirty south oysters. Yeah, it's something that we feature over at Catch on the restaurant. So these are these are local coconut cream plus oh. Carolina gold. Local rice soft coated. shell crabs. Yep. Soft shell crabs. What a combination. Is this something you've made before or did you? Uh, no, I'm making this up right now. Just for <laughs> awesome. You. This can be your role, Mark. <laughs> this is called Masago Arara. It... Beautiful. The sriracha cream that we made. Yeah. This next one is one that's already kind of on our menu. James, you want to take this? A roll unlike anything I've ever had. And Chef Lee's creativity just you came up with that just off the top of your head and what the ingredients that went into it, that soft shell, the center of it, but then wrapped up in ingredients. North Carolina jumbo lump crab meat, cream cheese. We use a little bit of rosé in here, some fresh dill and celery seed. That, that's all it is for our crab dip. And, uh, and this is something common in the South? In, in absolutely, North Carolina. absolutely. Yeah. North Carolina crab dip. North You'll Carolina see. Carolina crab dip. That's right. Many different ways. It has a nice brown across the top, and that's really good. Okay. Uh, from the cheese, makes it that much umptuous. We're going to transfer this into a container and serve it with some. Uh, North Carolina pork rinds. Right, what are you making next? I'm gonna make yeah. a miso sauce for okay. the mussels. Oh, all right. Love it. Just been slightly boiled. Uh, steamed. 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 Okay. steamed them. Yeah, for about a minute to open them up and to release some of the liquid okay. that's trapped in them. But you can just see the difference in the mussel meat. Those are the mussels that we harvested earlier this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so just really natural, good. completely natural. Yep. Chef Lee is over here making a miso sauce for the mussels. Basil microgreens. Okay. Nice. Is it all the way up? Uh, no, it's not. There you go. Oh. We're all sitting down for a family meal. Right this is the best. Yeah, man. It's great to hang out with you and your family. Thank you. Again, feel free, just tear in. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into those mussels since we harvested them, since they're right out of the walk right now, and that combination. Oh, wow. right Thank you for this amazing meal. Cheers. Mm. Oh, so good. You taste the seawater flavor. Oh, it's such a complexity of, of natural taste to it. And then with that amazing miso glaze that it doesn't overpower the flavor of the actual muscle and you taste that freshness shines. The sushi, sushi surfboard, I'm gonna grab a few of them. The toro? Toro. Maguro. Maguro. Chutoro. Chutoro, okay. Oh, and I gotta try this soft shell. Okay, this is the soft shell, first, second version of the soft shell crab roll, the spicy version. Mm. The freshness, 
the fried top shell crab. Oh, it's delicious. I like that that um, freshness of the asparagus in there too. Top shell crab roll. That is a beautiful, creative roll. Wow. <laughs> Wow. wow. Mm. I love it. That's impressive. Mm. I love it. Mm. Thank you. So, so this pork rind with crab dip on the top. It is everything southern as it gets. Everything southern as it gets. All in one bite. Mm. Oh wow, yeah. Oh. You feel like the strands of the crab in there, but then it's so rich, it's so cheesy, so creamy. Oh, and the pork rind just makes the perfect chip. Just scoop it up. This one is the otoro, the fatty tuna belly. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. One of the great single ingredients. It liquefies on your tongue. Oh, it's such an incredible table of food, incredible people. So we're gonna sit here, we're gonna keep digging in, clear the plates, and just enjoy our time hanging out. And again, something to emphasize is the use of local North Carolina ingredients. Ah, uh, yeah, wonderful meal. Thank you. Okay, we got poke next. Poke, raw, cubed fish, Hawaiian style with Pork rinds too. I don't think I've ever had that combination. But they had like, I like the fried like pork. It's oh, that crunch. Mmm. Oh, so good. You taste the. Uh, is there a little bit of miso? Focusing on the freshness of that tuna. Chef Keith's fried oysters, which is again, this is a dish that he serves at the restaurant. That is it. That is like a memory on it. And the blue cheese slaw at the bottom. If you taste the oysters crispy, that melts in your mouth at the same time. Okay, next up for the the oyster, the baked oyster with collard greens. I, 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 I made that on the fly. Like, I'm sitting there making stuff, and I just made I'm Really, I made it up right then and there when he was standing there. Yeah. Oh, wow, yes. Soft shell. The combination of flavors, the complexity, the cheese, the collard greens. That's like a complete meal in one shell, in a single bite. This one is Thai chilies in there. We spent two full days with Chef Keith and his wife Angela and family. What an incredible time we had and what a learning experience it was. But first I just want to say thank you to Chef Keith and Angela for going out of your way to truly make this memorable, to show us the local ingredients, where you source your ingredients, the friendly people that we've met and uh, just the quality of ingredients and the amazing cooking. It's just been an incredibly special time, more than I had hoped for. Big thank you to everyone who was part of this, who was part of our time on the Carolina coast. And I'll have all the information in the description box below that you can check out. When you are in Wilmington, go say hi to Chef Keith. He'll be at Catch Restaurant, some of the best food you can eat. So good, ah, just positivity and passion that shines. So I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click the little bell icon. And that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Wilmington, North Carolina, and I will see you on the next video.